And uh, so Ad and Nora have been on a training um, program that's taught them to be trainers and they've been multiplying it to others. Tell us, tell us something about this because it's quite a phenomenal success story. All right. Hello, everybody. Um, my name is Suad and I live in Bristol. I have three children and my husband. And when I came first in Bristol 2000, I found um, our community need, um, especially a slow man women's need to gather in because um, you need to build the society in the Somali community with the Amara, you know, so where we live. And, and when we start to um, gather together, I said we're gonna do Bushara's group and Bushara mean good news. And I start to um, investigate what we need um, as a training, you know. And I go to Ayana and ask her what is training we are available. And um, we start to build a never the new training and understand personal partnership. And before we start, she gives us all the documents and it's so big. I said, wow, <laughs> we, we can go through it. You know, it's so too much for us. And we start uh, sitting on me and Nora and the group. We said, let's, let's work it out. How can we make it simple and easy to all community to understand it? And we start from this day. Uh, we do also the questionnaire, question mark, and easy and simple. And after that, uh, we go outside and train our women to understand more how to do the voting and how the system works, you know. If you have a problem with the um, housing, how you where are you gonna go? If you have a problem with them, um, like your GP, you know how you gonna deal with it. And we start working with different organizations as a refugee women group and um, Amana, um, Amana, Amana, yeah, and uh, Spain, and Full Circle, and just gathering, you know, we know each other and understand because we live in same community, we know we want to know what is available, you know. That's it for me. Oh, and me. And um, hello, my name is Nora Abi and I've got four children. I live in Bristol, of course. Um, I'm involved in a project that's involved with children with special needs. And the project aims to help awareness and understanding of dealing with children with special needs in order to support community members to help their children and not to be ashamed, which is the case in many families. Um, I decided to play a key role in this project because my son has got autism. Um, I was very lonely to access any of the services that was available to me at the time and I thought it would be worth getting involved, involved in the community and to be able to find ways that I can be able to work in the communities and can get help myself. Um, I'm now an a, a experienced NHS interpreter, and I work with the um, with different community with different uh, projects in the community, and um, I have started being part of the empowering program with um, BDA, and that has given us the strength and the courage to be able to um, work in the community, and the training gives us the the uh, courage to work with the community. The, 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 uh, the communities that we were involved. So, um, yeah, if, we have... I, I mean, you've, you've engaged something like 80, 80 people, haven't you, that previously weren't engaged in the community, so you've, you've built up a... Oh, excuse me, you've built up a superb social capital. Uh, yeah. What was the magic? How have you managed to do that? Why, why isn't that going on everywhere? Maybe it is. It's because we've done it ourselves. We've been supported and encouraged to do it ourselves. Often it's not the case for it's not easy to be able to have people coming into communities to be able to deliver and understand mm -hmm. how it works. But when you have been given the empower, when you've been empowered and you've been given the uh, opportunity to be able to support your community, it really is magic. And did you just go down to the corner shop and buy this empowerment? Where, where did you get it from? <laughs> um, C communities are very close in the, and, and, and word of mouth is very easy. But when you know people in your communities are delivering communities, it is very easy to be able to get people and get involved and take part. Yeah. And, and some, tell us some of the success, successes you've had with all of those people, the little things that some of those people are doing to change their lives. I mean, for me, one of the things I got part was I was I part of the trainings that we went to and the um, information that we have received in terms of the training was going one of the talks that 
Lee and Jasper done on, on the voting system. And I was really surprised in terms of the number of people that were not taking part in the community in voting and not letting their voice heard. And so that encouraged me and, and I thought I could be able to take part in supporting these people. And there was um, different varieties of um, 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 gatherings that was taking place at the time in our community. So I pretty much, uh, 60% of people, I have taken their forms of the folks and they took part and have voted. And so for me that was, you know, something, little thing at least, for the community to be able, their voice to be heard. So access, helping um, the community access um, for the voting, um, I have process, I have an, an progress on the an autism project that I was involved in terms of taking it to the council in Bristol and looking into that because apparently for some reason there's a higher autism in the Somali community. So that's something the council is going to look into and um, gain employment and um, be ambition, ambitious to be able to take part in the society that we are living in. Because, um, sorry, no, no, no. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, I mean, because quite a lot of the voluntary sector are here in the room today, there'll be some people thinking, oh, we already do this. But um, for the people who don't already do it, what does it cost to do this? They need, they need to rustle up some money from this magic private sector uh, well, we... to deliver some of this. We're, we're, how much? Are you going to tell us, Iana, or are you going to talk? Uh, no, no, no. I'll okay. see you. Okay. <laughs> um, well, we, we were supported. You have to hold it in front of your mouth, apparently. Oh, up, go, you know, straight like that, yeah. parallel with the ground. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, cool. yeah. We were commissioned um, as one of the BME hubs via Black Southwest Network um, in relation to um, connected, the connecting communities um, targeted support fund. So we received um, to um, ten thousand pounds. That was over the year, sort of two thousand five hundred per quarter um, and um, it was enhanced with additional sort of support that we had as an agency um, but I think it, there was far more there's far more required than the 2000 mm. but I think so um, is that 2000 a quarter so yeah. about 8000 a year yeah no it's 2500 <laughs> all right Okay, so so about 10,000 10, a, 10, a year. Yeah. Now in terms of cost benefit analysis, a day like this, if we added up all the salaries of the people in the room, would be costing something like 30 to 50,000 pounds, depending on how many executives we've got here. That's actually a very cheap uh, piece of delivery to empower 90 people in a local community, isn't it? Yeah, well, as um, Nora said, I think that it went much further than that because, in terms of not only these two individuals, there were 80 women because. There were eight groups of women um, that we supported and they went on and trained the women within their various communities or got some together. And um, then Nora single-handedly went out and engaged with 60 people that had never registered to vote and encouraged them. She actually came in and said, hey, Anna, can I photocopy some forms to get these people and she went in on the internet and printed them off and got them to register for vote which was really important so I think it's quite a lot in terms of um, the, the, the quantitative outcomes much as the quantitative So that your multipliers and network is the same as Maggie and Michelle that we've just been hearing from Something special about your group, women only? Mainly? Somebody earlier alluded to uh, women um, I've run our playgroups, uh, get involved in opening up our youth clubs and so on in society. There's women who are carrying a lot of this big society, as well as needing childcare and all the other support. Why did you focus on women only and what was special about that? Yeah. Yeah. Because, uh, Can I start it? Yeah. yeah. Because um, if you start with a mum, you know, and um, she's going to have like, um, if she has a childcare, she's going to focus on learning. When she's educated, she's going to give her children, you know, a good education. And uh, the mom is the key for the house, you see, in our summary, you know. If you have a good mom in the house, you gotta, you gotta have a good house. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That is what is the focus. We, we could take a vote on that. Come on, ladies. Well, any guys who don't vote for it are gonna get smacked anyway. <laughs>
Well, Malcolm X said, to educate a man is to educate an individual, and to educate a woman is to educate and liberate a nation. Yeah. So, yeah.